Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics. And in this video, we're going to calculate what must the initial velocity of an object be if we project it straight up and we want it to reach a height of 11.5 meters. So here we go. Here we have our projector, this guy, this person. He's going to project the ball straight up into the air, something like this. And we want to know how, if we want to go 11.5 meters up into the air, what must the initial velocity be? So I think for free fall problems, it's a good idea just to draw a simple picture. You don't necessarily have to draw somebody or some person or something projecting the ball, but maybe you would draw a ball that's up in the air, write down 11.5 meters and what is the initial velocity. That is really all we're given in the problem. Now, the next thing you should do is get out or write down all five of the variables that are contained in the kinematic equations. Initial and final velocity, change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Let's write down what we know and what we don't know. Now, we're only given really explicitly one piece of information. That is that we want the ball, the object, to go to a height of 11.5 meters. But there is some other information that we know that you need to recognize that's not explicitly stated in the problem, and that is, when the object reaches the top of its path, of course it's going to come back down. When it reaches the top of its path, it's going to have a final velocity or a velocity of zero meters per second. So we've put down the final velocity is zero. Now, why is it slowing down? Well, there's the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative and pointing in the opposite direction. And that is a constant, and that is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity. And we're looking for the initial velocity, and we don't know the time and we're not given the time okay so once again you'll notice we're given three of the variables we're asked to find the fourth so we get out now our kinematic equations we're going to choose the correct equation it must contain the initial velocity which all of these equations contain the initial velocity but it must also contain the other three variables that we know if we want to solve for the initial velocity so the first equation has initial velocity, do we know the other three variables? We know the change in position. We know the final velocity, but we don't know the time. So we're looking for one thing, we don't know one of the others. We can't really solve this, use this equation to solve for the initial velocity. Therefore, we're not going to use it. Now, you'll notice the next two equations also have the time in them. They also have the initial velocity, but we don't know the time. So therefore, we cannot use this equation, and we cannot use this equation. But what about this last equation. Let's see, it has the change in position. Okay, we know the change in position. It has the acceleration, we know the acceleration. It has the final velocity, we know the final velocity, and it has the thing we're looking for. So therefore, this is the equation we're going to use. It has the variable we're looking for, we know the other three, so we can use this equation to solve for the initial velocity, and let's do that right now. Now, before I plug the values in, I like to simplify my equation as much as possible and rearrange it to solve it for the variable that I'm looking for, which is the initial velocity. I'm mean, going to simplify this a little bit first because we know that the final velocity is zero, and that means the final velocity squared is zero, so I'd like to make this term zero. And now I'm going to move the initial velocity squared over to the other side. I'm going to subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides, and that is going to give me that the minus because I subtract from both sides, I have nothing on this side. So I have minus the initial velocity squared is equal to two times a times the change in position. Okay, now we're solving for the initial velocity, so I wanna get rid of this negative sign, so I'm gonna multiply this whole equation by minus one, and then I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. I'm gonna do those two things, and that will leave me with the initial velocity is equal to the square root of minus, because I multiply the whole equation, both sides by minus one, so minus 2a delta y, 2 times a times delta y. Okay, pretty straightforward. A little bit of algebra. Plug my values in. The initial velocity is equal to minus 2 times minus 9.81 times 11.5. That's the height. And I get that the initial velocity of the object must be 11, must be 15 meters per second. If any object is projected straight up into the air, free fall, which basically means we're ignoring air resistance, if it's projected straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, then it would reach a height of 11.5 meters. Okay, there you go. 
we did the following steps. We drew a little picture. We wrote in what we knew. We wrote down all five variables, filled in what we know what we don't know. We chose the correct equation, rearranged it for the variable we're solving for, plugged the values in, got the answer with the correct units, and there you go. Not that complicated. Follow those steps, and you can do that, no problem. All right? Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much. If you found the video helpful, please do all of the following three things. Please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And then subscribe to my channel. Get all of my helpful physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.